So it's been about a year since I did a favorite art supply video. So I figured I would do an updated video because a lot changed in one year. I've ex explored a lot of different medium, so different art supplies. And I wanted to show you my favorite art supplies more specifically when it comes to graphite because that's the medium I've been using a lot in the last few months. If you've been following me, you will have noticed that. And yeah, so let's get started. So first let's talk about pencils. So I use two types of pencils. I use regular pencils and then I use mechanical pencils. Mechanical pencils are great for really fine lines and mechanical pencils come with different types of leads. Um, so I've been using the 0.5 size, which is pretty thin. You have larger sizes and smaller sizes as well, but I like the 0.5. And you can use different hardness or softness of the lead. So I have a 4H, a 2B, and a 4B. 4H being the hardest. 2B is kind of in the middle and 4B is the softest lead. And that's what I've been using and I really, really like. Uh, I'll put in the description below links to the art supplies I use. Although I don't know if I can find the same mechanical pencils because I've had those for a really long time, but I look for something very similar. So when it comes to regular pencils, my favorite pencils is Faber-Castell 9000. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Faber-Castell. You'll see I have a lot of Faber-Castell uh, supplies that are my favorite. But I believe this is the best pencil out there. This is what professional artists use and I've had a lot of success with those pencils. I've used other brands before and yeah, these are, you know, they feel good in your hand on the paper and the leads don't break. So highly recommend those pencils. They come individually. You can buy them individually at your art store, maybe also on Amazon, but at the, at the art store for sure. And they also come in sets. So I have two sets and each set gives you a different variety of LEDs. I need my glasses for this. <laughs> so this set uh, is from a 2H to a 8B and this set is from a 5H to a 5B. So it really depends uh, what you like to work with. I bought both so I could have the whole variety of LEDs from harder to softer. The harder LEDs being for lighter values and light sketches and the softer LEDs are for darker values and contrast. And now when it comes to darker values, if you've worked with graphite, you might have noticed that if you're using, I don't know, a even a 5B, 6B or beyond, the graphite gets really shiny in some lights and you get that silverish uh, reflection, which isn't great. So Faber-Castell came up with a solution. They came up with this uh, pit graphite mat and you can buy them individually or in this little set. This set goes from 2B to 12B and then I have this individual one is 14B. I think that's the darkest. Well, that's the softest lead Faber-Castell sells in this type of pencil. And uh, basically those pencils eliminate that shine because they're matte. <laughs> so another trick I've used to kind of avoid that shine on the darkest values of my drawings is I use a polychromos uh, black pencil. Yeah. So those are my favorite pencils. Let's move on to erasers. So there's actually a bunch of different types of erasers <laughs> that you can use because erasers aren't just to erase mistakes. They also are very useful to create textures or add highlights to your graphite drawings. So there's different types. You can have just the pencil eraser, which is great for very small highlights. Say if you're drawing fur or feathers or things like that. Now my favorite eraser this day is probably the Tombow Mono Zero eraser. It comes in square or round tip. And I use the round tip a lot. I used it either to just erase little mistakes, but mostly for highlights. 
and I could not recommend this more. Uh, so it comes with, uh, it's like a mechanical pen almost, but it's an eraser. And then you have uh, extra erasers that come with. Another eraser I use a lot is the Faber Castell Dust Free Eraser. And this I would use when I work on my initial sketch and just erase parts that I don't like. Also, another awesome eraser and very useful are kneaded erasers. And what's great about those is you can shape them to whatever shape you need. So again, for little highlights and or areas, if you want to lighten an area, you can smoosh them and tap on your paper. So you can get a lot of interesting textures using kneaded erasers. And then last but not least is a electric eraser. So this is great if you want to create highlights maybe on darker values. I got a version that's rechargeable rather than battery operated because I don't want to have to deal with batteries and I think it's very convenient. And it comes with two different size of eraser, a fine size and a kind of a wider size. And yeah, it's this brand. I'll put it in the description, but this has been kind of a game changer uh, along with the Tombow Mono Zero when it comes to adding highlights to my graphite drawing. So I highly recommend those. Another supply I've been using quite a bit lately in my graphite drawings are blending stumps. So they come in different like sizes and there's a lot of different brands selling those. Um, you can buy them in packs like this. Um, so there's, like I said, different sizes from fairly large to really thin, which allows you to blend different areas in your drawing. Some of the blending stump set also come with a little bit of sanding paper because that's how you can clean the tips and bring them back to the original cleanliness so that you don't smudge your paper, your drawing. I'll probably do a video, uh, a small tutorial on how to clean your blending stumps at some point. Another tool I use to blend my graphite, which is not an art supply, but Nonetheless, very useful are those mecha brushes because mecha brushes are made to move around powder, right? So especially like this tip, I'll put, these are from Eco Tools. I'll, I'll put the link in the description below. And I found them really helpful. If you want a very soft effect in blending, uh, those are great. So next let's talk about sharpening the pencils. So I still love this Exacto electric sharpener. It works really well. You get really fine points, but they're not very long points, which working with graphite, it's nice to have a longer point so that you can use the pencil sideways as well as straight. I sometimes still use a regular pencil sharpener, but in the end, the best way to sharpen your pencils if you want a really fine long point is with a blade so this is made in England I'll put the link in the description below it's extremely sharp and works really really well to sharpen your pencils I would highly recommend this one and or also Faber-Castell makes a blade that's looks kind of fancy I guess <laughs> and works really really well and then sometimes I'll use, you know, this sanding paper that I showed you for cleaning your blending stumps. You can also use that to make the point like even sharper than maybe with an electric sharpener or a regular sharpener. So yeah, those are the tools I use to sharpen my pencils. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about my favorite papers. So there's two types of papers I've been using that I really like. This one, the Canson, or Canson, if you want to say it the French way. <laughs> uh, mixed media paper. It's pretty thick. It's 98 pounds. It's not super thin. It's a bright white and a pretty good quality. It's a smooth paper, which I like a smooth texture uh, so that 
you know, when I draw with graphite and I want extra texture to add some weird bumps to my drawing. <laughs> Uh, but my absolute favorite paper would have to be the Arches watercolor hot press paper. This is 140 pounds, so thicker than the Constant, which is 98 pounds. And you want a thicker surface if you're gonna add a lot of layers and work on the paper, because maybe if you use erasers and so many layers of uh, graphite, that might damage the paper. So thicker paper, allows you to work on your drawing more maybe me and maybe have a more elaborated uh, piece of art so i would highly recommend arch paper and it's a little bit more expensive but even if you're fairly new to graphite you'll notice the difference between using a hot press watercolor paper compared to like a regular drawing paper um, and you'll be able to bring your drawings much further than with regular drawing paper. I hope that makes sense. So I hope this video about my favorite art supplies when it comes to graphite was helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not already, share the video with your friends, leave me a comment, and I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye.